Uh, all right, so it's a shame I have to do this video again. There's some people on the internet that are completely fucking worthless and are giving out false information. And, um, like, the most popular people on the internet are giving out extremely bad information just due to sheer fucking ignorance. And the problem is, is this new wave of people aren't athletes. They're not bodybuilders, so they have no bro science background. And so they can't discern correct information from incorrect information. So because someone's got 100,000 followers or 50,000 followers, it's assumed they're right. And they have high production values to their videos. That's why they have the followers. is because they are making so much money selling garbage drugs through their websites that they're able to pay full-time computer people to make their shit look nice. So these worthless motherfuckers are promoting Aromasin. So I'm going to do something I guess no one else does, and that's actually show you rather than tell you the differences. The first thing I want to say is the textbook that I was using says, under no circumstances would any type of athlete use Aromasin on cycle or post cycle therapy, it's simply too weak. So it's like 10 years ago, everyone knew not to use aromasin. Now it's like everyone uses it because they're fucking stupid and they learn everything off the internet. So AI matrix. All right. Kind of like the crazy hot matrix, only more useful. It's like you needed a matrix to tell you that the hotter a girl is, the crazier she is. Please. All right, so my favorite is Letro. Letro is 90 to 100% effective at reducing estrogen. So let's say you, there's a lot of stupid motherfuckers who use a 1,000 test. And then these worthless idiots use 25 milligrams of aromasin, kind of like, oh, but aromasin stops the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. It's like not when you're taking a fucking thousand, it's supposed to stop the conversion of testosterone to estrogen when you're a woman with breast cancer. Anyway, so they always come to me with boobs and they're like, I don't know how this happened. I was taking a room with then. It's like, so you went out in a hurricane with an umbrella and got wet and you're confused? Fucking imbecile. So... Letrozole is 99.9% .9 effective, according to most things. But we're going to be conserved and say it's 95 on average. That means if you're taking a 1,000 test and 20% normally gets converted to estrogen, of course, it's higher than that. It's a, if someone makes 5 milligrams of test a day, 20% gets converted to estrogen. The more tests you're injecting, the more your body's like, we don't need this shit. And so they're going to convert it. And if you're using other anabolic steroids that bind to the androgen receptor better, almost all your testosterone gets converted to estrogen. So if you really don't want gyno, don't use test. It's just to make your dick work. If your dick works, you don't need it. <laughs> so, but people don't want to hear that. They want to listen to people who, whatever, I'm not going to go there because I could hurt their feelings. So potency, it's one over 2.5 milligrams. Why do I call it that, that? Because the more you got to use, the less potent something is. So Electro comes in a 2.5 milligram pill. The study that I had in my um, aromatase enzyme article back from 2014 was that they found that the increase in natural testosterone was four times higher for someone who used 1.25 milligrams of Electro every three days over somebody who used 2.5 milligrams a day. That it's overkill to use this shit every day. So the optimal amount is 1.25 every three days for natural testosterone production. Why does it increase natural testosterone? Because it suppresses estrogen and estrogen suppresses testosterone production. The category is a competitive inhibitor. The extra benefits is it decreases cortisol, so you lose less muscle, and it decreases aldosterone, so you store less Sodium, so you have less bloat, look leaner and drier, both through the suppression of cortisol, aldosterone, and estrogen. ADEX is just simply inferior. It's the same exact category. 
It's a little, you basically you'd use one milligram every three days as opposed to 1.25 every three days. And it's 90% effective. But this was the third generation. This is the second generation. So this is like a Lamborghini. This is like a Ford Taurus. And this is like a horse and buggy. This was the first developed. No one prescribes this. And in fact, it's not even prescribed to women with breast cancer unless they've hit menopause because it's so crappy and it's a suicide inhibitor, which means it destroys the levels of aromatase in your body. It's only 65% effective. So if you took a thousand milligrams of test and only 200 estrogen was going to be made, you get instead a two estrogen. This, you would have a 20 estrogen. This, you'd have a 60 estrogen, so three times a reasonable amount. And some people are like, but my blood work says that 40 is normal. It's like, because most men these days are fucking whiny bitches. If you want to be a fucking whiny bitch, enjoy your 40 um, estrogen. I'd rather have a 5 or a 10. And people are like, but that causes your HDL to go down. It's like, yeah, I'd rather be a man all the way up until I'm 70 and dead, then be some whiny bitch that no one cares about until I'm 110 so I can live in a retirement home where no one visits me for 40 years. All right. And then 7-8 Benzo is a 50% suicide inhibitor. This is the what we have in Thor's Hammer. Um, and then we also have a aromate. Rim, a um Arimistane, which is a competitive inhibitor. So you're like, well, aren't suicide inhibitors better because of rebound? So let's explain. So this takes two or three days to hit steady state concentration. This takes two or three days. This takes seven days. So the point is, you go off of this shit. The idea is your estrogen is going to skyrocket because while you suppress the aromatase enzyme, your body makes more aromatase and upregulates the E2 receptors because there's less E2 floating around. That's true. Aromatase kills dead 65%. You know, it kills a bunch of the aromatase enzyme. But when the aromatase enzyme gets killed, your body still makes more. So the concept that a suicide inhibitor, because it permanently destroys everything it binds to rather than it can just float away, that doesn't really have any long-term effect change. The reason why there's less of a rebound is because it's so weak, your body doesn't really care to fight back that hard. So your HDL doesn't go down that much because you still have quite a bit of estrogen. Your um, joints don't hurt that much because you still have quite a bit of estrogen. A lot of idiots that have no common sense at all think that the reason why they have joint pain when they take Letro or Arimidex is because it's the Letro and Arimidex just magically do it. Because it re they read it in a book, it's true. It's not like the Letro and Arimidex bind to your joint and eat away at it, or bind to a pain receptor and activate it. It's that they fucking work. They lower your estrogen. And what estrogen does is it makes bone and cartilage grow. So if you take all the estrogen away, nothing is repairing your joint after you break it down by lifting weights. Fucking common sense. Oh my God. It's like, if, if, do their shoes have an R and an L labeled on them? How do they even know how to dress themselves? Does their wife lay their clothes out for them? How could they be so fucking stupid? But there are people like that and our society is so soft. They don't die. There's no attrition that there's no like, there's guardrails to life now. Before, there was just the cliff and the stupid people walked off the cliff. Now we've got guardrails and so stupid people live to reproduce with other stupid people and we get super stupid people that they think that they don't have any common sense at all and they don't understand that, yes, you're reducing your estrogen so you don't get gyno, but there's things estrogen actually do in your body you may want, like help proliferate IGF-1 levels, cause satellite cell migration, cause hyperplasia and hypertrophy to muscle tissue. That's why I like drugs like D-ball and test grow muscle is because of the estrogen. So rather than using a thousand tests and then trying to stomp on it with um, Letro or saying, please stop, no, like having a four-year-old child trying to stop the stampede of the bulls in northern Basque country, 
in the Iberian Peninsula. I forgot the name of that country. But the point is, why not just use a reasonable amount of test? If you fucking have to, if your compulsory dickweed brain won't let you just listen for once in your fucking life and not use test, and just use a natural test product like Thor's Hammer, if you gotta just inject something in your ass, otherwise you don't feel like a man, use 200 milligrams of test. Then maybe your piss of shit aromatin would actually work. But if you're gonna be running a fuck ton of test, like 400 or 500 test, then you're probably going to need Electro at a 1.25 every three days. And then remember, most of my business is people who gave themselves gyno and they want help. And it's like, you couldn't read the gyno article. You'd rather pay me to tell you what the gyno article says. You're that lazy. Okay, so it's 2.5 milligrams of Electro every day until the breast tissue has gone. Common sense. And there's more to it than that. Like there's tamoxifen. You know, the aromatase inhibitors decrease the tenderness of the nipple, but the actual breast tumor you gave yourself is not going to go away without tamoxifen shrinking it. And that's a whole other video. This is just about aromatase inhibitors. Specifically why aromasin sucks. Because for some reason, people are that fucking lazy. They'll just listen to some stick figure with no credibility tell them this drug's better because it doesn't suppress your HDL and it doesn't cause joint pain. Yeah, it doesn't suppress your HDL or joint pain because it doesn't fucking work. Take home points for the spoon fed part of the population. <sighs> You don't need an aromatase inhibitor if you don't use test. <laughs> you don't need test if your dick works. Just because you read on the internet that there's going to be a side effect doesn't mean it's true. Have you ever watched a commercial about drugs? It's like for like herpes medication. Like I can have a full normal life. It's like may cause blindness, deafness, limbs falling off, and mortality. You know, it's like... You get an outbreak, what, once every 20 years? So you're going to risk death, blindness <laughs> over that? But people read on the internet that, oh, if you got, if you use DECA, you got to use Kaber, you're going to get prolactin issues. It's like, have you ever met someone with that? Yeah, my buddy has a drippy nipple. It's like, is he on steroids? No. So what the fuck does it have to do with this conversation? Nothing. So it's like, just because you read... That you're going to die of heart... You're not Dallas McCarver. You're not going to just drop dead of heart disease because you use steroids and didn't use aromasin and use something effective. But just because you think you're going to get a, a non-functional dick doesn't mean you're going to. In fact, worrying about your dick not working is probably why it's not working. If it's not working, not the lack of testosterone. But if you have to use test. 200 milligrams a reasonable amount to add to an anabolic cycle. Test doesn't really grow muscle. Anabolic steroids do. Anabolic steroids were made from test to be better than test. Side effect free and fully functional. Watch the Nandrolone video if you're still confused. Don't ask any questions. Um, if you're going to use an aromatase inhibitor, use one that works. As you saw on the chart, the best one's letrozole. If you don't want to use letrozole, then instead of using aromasin, use Thor's hammer because the 7-8 benzo works as good as aromasin. Plus, there's a competitive inhibitor that's going to be amplify the effects of the 7-8 benzo. Plus, the uh, um, Thor's hammer has so many other important things in it, like the sodium diaspartate, which is kind of superior to HCG, and it has the L-carnitine to transport to upregulate the um, androgen receptor. It has secretagogues to increase your natural GH release, and it has agmatine sulfate to increase blood flow to the muscles in the penis. I mean, it's way better than just some breast cancer meds that are ultra archaic. It's like, I'm going to rob this bank. It's like, what do you have, like an assault rifle? No, I've got a rock and a note. Well, what's the rock for? I'm going to bash someone's head in if they don't do what I say. That's like trying to stop estrogen conversion with aromasin if you're using injectable testosterone that's like i'm gonna inject i'm gonna take a thousand milligrams of halo 
and use Rogaine so I don't lose my hair. I'm not going to fucking cut it. So that's the bottom line. And watch, there's going to be all these questions about hair loss. Like, keep it on the fucking subject or watch the right video. Like, watch the hair loss video if you got hair loss questions. I couldn't believe the amount of lazy assholes who asked about Aromasin with the um, D-Ball video rather than just watching the appropriate video on aromatase inhibitors. So I'm making another one for you guys because I don't have one in the Anabolic University series. Just so that I never have to answer any question about aromatase inhibitors ever again. Because it's just mind-numbingly ridiculous how many times I have to repeat the same information because people are too lazy to look it up. It's like when I went to school, I didn't even go to class. I read the book. <laughs> and then I would answer, do all the, at the end of every chapter, I would do all the questions. Not the assigned ones. I would just do all of them. And then I would go to the teacher's office hours with anything that I couldn't figure out. I'd have two questions. It takes three minutes. And everyone's happy. Like, like why be so fucking lazy and needy that you can't look up the answer yourself? You have to ask a question. It's like, I'd be so ashamed of myself if I actually asked someone for help. I don't understand why it's so normal now. You know, I, I do like doing videos that educate people in mass. But if the video is on D-Ball, why are people asking me questions about aromasin? Like, what the fuck? Stay on topic. I even said in the video, don't ever ask me a question about something that isn't specific to the video subject. So I got three fucking questions in, a, in six hours about aromasin. No fucking manners, no respect. I wanted to block all three people, but I was like, it's such a plague of this new generation of people that they use steroids first, second, and third, have never lifted a weight, and have never actually dieted, and that they all learn from the same two or three worthless assholes, and they all have been pushing aromasin because they... They just think that it's a magical property of the drug, that this drug doesn't affect HDL or joints, but these do. It's like you fucking morons. They reduce estrogen. Reducing estrogen hurts HDL and hurts your joints. So if the drug you're talking about doesn't stop gyno, doesn't reduce estrogen, I mean, doesn't reduce HDL and doesn't cause joint pain, it doesn't fucking reduce estrogen. And if you look it up, that's what the data shows. It's like they watch each other's videos and do the same fucking subject without looking it up. And then this population's so needy and so spoon-fed. And it's like, I guess it's not each individual's fault. It's society society's fault. I've watched how women raise their boys now. Little boys are raised like little girls. It's fucking pathetic. It's like there's no difference between men and women anymore. Everyone's fucking needy and worthless. So, I mean, people are like, why are you being so abusive? Well, at least I put the rant at the end of the video so you didn't have to fucking watch the whole thing to get to this point. But if you were me, look at it from my perspective. If years ago, I educated the planet, you know, and everyone was on the same page. Electro was the best. And then a couple people that have no credibility come out of nowhere in like 2016 or 2017 and have really high production videos and have contaminated the entire population of planet Earth. And all these men are going out and giving themselves breast tumors because they're listening to two people who have no credibility, then you'd be angry too. It's like you you invest your life into some type of pursuit and it gets erased. It's like, what if you were the person who wrote the Bible and then you came, went to sleep and you woke up and you come back and the Bible's been swapped out with 
Britney Spears tabloids. And that's basically like what's happened to the bodybuilding community in the past three or four years. And that they're not even bodybuilders. It's just regular people have contempt because the fitness craze is so popular. You get fitness people who think they're bodybuilders. I actually heard some physique guy refer to himself as a bodybuilder at this show the other day. That um, Serena competed and got first in bikini. And um, there's some guy there who's trying to talk about how cool he is and that he's a bodybuilder. And he's like five foot eight, 145 pounds. And sort of shredded. I was like, you're not a bodybuilder. You've got board shorts on. You're a fucking physique competitor. You're not even a classic physique competitor. You're just a physique guy. You're not a bodybuilder. So people are like, what's this rant about? The rant's about how anyone could take somebody seriously who I've mentioned in the previous two videos and that I have to do videos to mop up the fucking mess this person made of my planet. It's just a, a fucking asinine. So, one more time because people need to hear it three times. Don't use test. Use to grow muscle. Use test for impotence. And even then, Cialis works better. So, if you got to use test, you're probably going to give yourself gyno. Aromasin probably isn't going to cut it to prevent the gyno. You're probably going to have to use a low-dose letrozole. And once you do give yourself gyno, use a higher dose at a higher frequency. Um, I've got articles, videos, up the ass about this stuff. I've already talked about it twice in this video. If you've got questions, shame on you. Because this has been pretty clear. Um, and if you do have questions, please keep it to the topic of, aromatase, of AIs, aromatase inhibitors. If you want to ask questions about CIRMs, go to the fucking CIRM video, watch that, and then ask your questions. It's just common sense. It's like the world does not revolve around you, no matter how much your mommy taught you. It does. That it astonishes me no matter how much I make in every video requesting people not to ask stupid questions or off-topic questions, how many stupid and off-topic questions I get. It's like you guys want me to turn the comments off so that no one can ask any questions ever. It's like the smart people are going to be hurt by the amount of stupid people. And what's funny is it's only like 10% of the population that are disrespectful or stupid. The troll populations went down a lot. Um, I think blocking everyone who even gives a slightest hint of trolldom has then scared the other trolls. And they're like, you know, as much as I hate Todd, I do learn from him. So I'm just not going to not comment and I'll watch the video. You know, a like is plenty. You don't need to talk about, what do you call it, what happened on Family Feud last night in the comment stream. You could keep it on topic. So, th one thing I have to point out with every video is that, although I'm a medical doctor, this is not medical advice. I'm not suggesting you go out and use breast cancer meds. In fact, I'm suggesting you use Thor's hammer. <laughs> but if you do use breast cancer meds, um, I would say use the effective ones. You don't want to take an umbrella to a hurricane. So there's absolutely no point to ever use aromasin. It's just completely fucking worthless. I would, I would think, yeah, but it, it's just, it's just, just don't even waste your money. There's a, a little bit of electro goes a very long way. And that this is all for entertainment purposes only. That I'm, that's part of why I try to make so many jokes. It's just like the George Carlin stand-up comedy hour crossed with scientific discussion about a bunch of bullshit. So, have a great day. May the force be with you. Don't do drugs. Stay in the school. Don't break any laws. 
Don't hit anybody, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't set yourself on fire, don't stick forks in light sockets. I don't hate you, I don't know you, blah, blah, blah.